this crew that I worked in here and uh, was trying to get my bearings uh, still on. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much uh, for uh, inviting me to this gathering and uh, it's a unique opportunity for me to address an eclectic group which uh, is open to new thinking and I, I hope and uh, I look forward to this being an interaction because I think uh, I don't think that my standard modes of you know disposing and going to work. And thank you Krishna, for uh, arranging this uh, and everybody else for coming. Um, yeah, the talk that I have, uh, the title that I have, uh, which is uh, presented by Nirmana, um, is, is pretty as close as it gets to uh, the the sort of main mainstream stuff that I do. Uh, and in the last, uh, let me say, 10 years or 15 years of my life, I've focused on uh, climate-related issues because uh, uh, it seemed an area which was extremely important but seemed to be uh, not as much studied, not as much investigated, not as much uh, known about it, at least uh, in, in Sri Lanka, certainly, and even globally, I think there is that issue. Uh, if you follow the media um, uh, and, and, uh, and quite a bit of like you know uh, uh, critical thinking out there, there is you get the sense that you know you have to take climate change uh, to be uh, something completely out of the ordinary. That it is something that may have major implications, almost civilizational uh, level implications, you know, changing how we live and so on. Uh, or it may, and, and from there downwards, there are uh, formulations of what climate change means for, um, for different people. Uh, we, So I mean I will I mean I, for, for for many people it seems you know it's just another buzzword you know I mean, like sustainable development uh, it's something that is there in the media but you don't know how it touches our lives or it touches the issues that are of importance to us uh, so that's you don't know what scale it is at but is it something that I should be worried about? You know, for my game. Is it something that I should be worried about for me and the next generation that I have, or the next two generations, uh, you know, uh, that I care about, or maybe longer? Should I care about, uh, you know, my village, for example? You know, so there are these, all of these things are sort of tied up with one's own outlook as to. Uh, what one values, what one is allowed to care about, uh, what uh, one, how one deals with threats. We all have to deal with threats. There are always uh, threats to us. I mean, there's, uh, I mean, you're driving a car, there is a threat that you know there could be some major bomb, for example, or you could have an accident or something like that. Uh, there could be uh, there are geological threats, there could be an earthquake or something like that. Which, so we, we have, as human beings, it's conditioned ourselves to deal with a lot of threats by either pushing them aside or uh, ignoring them or uh, maybe paying attention to them for some time. And if you can do something about it, and maybe the experience of the war or something that we can learn from, you can do something about it, you do it, otherwise you shut it out. I mean, I myself uh, did a lot of it, and I could see myself evolving as the world changed. Uh, my own, uh, so my own uh, push for this uh, probably started when, uh, um, as an engineer, I mean, as an engineering student, going to uh, Peradeniya 
in uh, the 1980s. I was sort of searching for some sort of meaning uh, in the way, um, in, in how I was approaching engineering. Uh, usually, uh, engineering is, uh, you know, I mean, the profession itself has, uh, it has various origins, but in its modern form, it, it is really about how you, they will define it as how do you alter the environment and, uh, um, to meet social needs in its broadest forms. Often that social need is articulated by power, by powerful people. It could be the military, it could be uh, you know, people that uh, you know, access over the political power or economic power. So, so that's one way of looking at it. And engineering did not know how to do sustainable, I mean, did not consider the issues of sustainability. You know. How do you frame what you do, which is altering nature and altering uh, uh, various processes to serve certain ends. How do you uh, do that? And we, there is something called a, a code of practice. Uh, there is accreditation programs and so on. All of those are sort of oriented towards making sure that you know you don't really, uh, as it were, spoil the pond for. I mean, spoil, spoil the well for others. You know. So you have to have some certain practices so that you know things don't fall, and you know you will protect the reputation of engineers, and and you don't do something completely egregious which affects the profession. Uh, but then there is the issue of like you know uh, if there is areas in which you don't agree on, such as uh, uh, you know. I mean, like there is this whole issue, should we at all be concerned about uh, environmental problems? Going into the future, there is very strong lobbies which argue saying that uh, technology will solve all these problems and, and what you really need is to have uh, people enable them and don't worry about other issues. But for me, that was problematic. I, I, could, not, I could not buy it early and I couldn't articulate why I should uh, and I, but a good number of people uh, sort of seem to buy that, although I can't really understand why. Maybe it is because the way we were schooled or maybe we were brought up, just accepted that uh, you know there are environmental problems and this cannot just be left uh, to take care of itself. There has to be some sort of intervention in the ways we live in the ways we do education, in the ways we do research, in the ways we do engineering, and, uh, and so on. So the idea of how, how do you have this step change where you start thinking that uh, things are not right and something has to change and other people have also have got to change with that. Um, I don't know how, you know, so that's a sort of issue that I never sorted out, but I went one side on it which is to say that, okay, there needs to be some change, and so therefore I went into the environmental field. Uh, it's an evolving field, and the idea is to put uh, the sustainability of life support systems, the earth has, uh, water supply for people, maintaining uh, diversity, biological diversity, Making sure that you know you have um, uh, you have uh, you know you don't emit chemicals into the atmosphere, which you know we don't know what the consequences of that. Uh, so that sort of um, uh, so I veered that way, but I don't know. I mean, I, I was at that time an exception uh, in the engineering profession. The engineering profession has since shifted. Um, but in the general population, I think most people, more people accepted it in Sri Lanka uh, than, uh, uh, than in the Indian population, I would say. But I don't know why that was. I, mean, I cannot. Uh, I think that you know, probably you all know more about why these things are in how society.
society is changing, how ideas uh, move people from one paradigm to another. Uh, and how one, all of this happens in the middle of uncertain information, conflicts over information, and, uh, and people coming at things from different angles. Right? So I'm going into the background of all of this, um, just to frame uh, how I came to climate research and how I think about, you know, uh, getting into the public sphere with what I know about climate and, uh, and you know, climate issues. So uh, I'm going to pause there and if there are any comments I will take. But I'm just setting the stage as to, you know, how I'm coming at this. And, and I, you know, and this is for me an opportunity for me to dig a little bit deeper into what informs my own thinking. About, uh, you know. So basically what I'm trying to say is that uh, how do societies uh, deal with threats? How do we perceive threats? How do we uh, decide that we should go in a different direction, how do we act collectively on those additions? And how do you come to that transition? Because in the climate area, I don't think we are in various stages of the transition, if there needs to be one, we don't know. 